NFL Week 14 starts tonight. I think it's 14, right? Week 14. It is. Yeah, I think it's. I don't. I don't remember it the is. weeks. Uh, but I do know that for many people, depending on uh, the league you're in, it's the final fantasy football regular season week. I know, big week. So, uh, yeah, it's probably a must-win week for somebody. Maybe me. Uh, I don't care. Uh, Ryan Wilson, CBSSports.com, Pick 6 Podcast, Super Friend, but also with the first pick pod, and we're going to start with that pod, uh, Ryan Wilson joins us on the Adam Gold Show. Thank you very much, my man. How you doing? Adam, happy holidays. How you doing, man? I'm doing very well. Let's, I, you and Rick Spielman, your uh, your partner in uh, in crime on that podcast, uh, uh, Rick fascinates me. Um, <laughs> and and the last time you were on, we talked about what he had to say about Caleb Williams in terms of best better prospect than anybody basically he's ever seen, other than Andrew Luck. And this we're talking about, and it's in relation to today's NFL. Maybe not a better prospect to be a quarterback than Peyton Manning, but for what today's NFL is, yes. So he's got, and you have, and you have your mock draft out. I saw the the top 10. Uh, I haven't looked at the entirety of the draft, but I saw the top 10 picks, and you have Caleb Williams one. I find it interesting that you have Drake May as the third quarterback. So behind Jaden Daniels of LSU, who's probably the favorite to win the Heisman Trophy. Uh, but so tell me what you and your conversations with uh, with Rick have been like about Caleb and Jaden and Drake. Well, let's start with Drake May as my QB three. I had him go in six, I believe, to the right. Giants. And so before I did this, because I, I don't think anyone would argue that Jaden Daniels has had the best, most productive college football season of yes. all three of those quarterbacks, probably. Yeah. And for different reasons, Caleb's offensive line has been terrible. Uh, there have been questions about the offense and how it's run through Drake May at UNC. And I actually like Drake May a lot. He is more than likely going to be QB2. But this was my fourth mock draft since the fall started okay. here. And I, I I thought it mixed it up a little bit. So I texted a couple people in the league. I said, how crazy is it that Jaden Daniels might be considered uh, getting getting taken before Drake? And the response I got back was not crazy. I mean, it, you know, I've, I've heard crazier, basically. So I, <laughs> I ran with it just to see what the, the reaction would be. Okay. <laughs> I, think, I think at the end of the day, it's going to be – Drake May is going to be QB2, and I don't know if we talked about this last time, Alan, um, Adam, but what I keep coming back to with Caleb, and this has been sort of a uh, – it's gathering the, uh, steam on social media, and then you hear people talk about it on the broadcast, and the, the issue is that Caleb plays out of structure too much. Right. He does play out of structure a lot because the offensive line was a huge problem. They did have some receivers that right. can make plays, but because you know I'm a nerd at heart, I went and checked. And Caleb got rid of the ball in three seconds or left on 57% of his dropbacks. And when you compare that to Drake, Drake got rid of the ball three seconds or left on 62% of his dropbacks. So there's not that big a difference. Right. And I think that's just something to keep in mind as we go through this process. In terms of what Rick thinks, Rick thinks I'm absolutely crazy for not taking Drake May as a QB2. Like he is all in on Drake May. He Good. has compared him to Trevor Lawrence. And that's a great hmm. comp. My comp for, for Drake is a little wider than that. I think high end Trevor, I think low end Daniel Jones. That's the spectrum Ooh. that you're on. And that's not necessarily uh, <laughs> an indictment, but I think the the message and one that's a recurring theme that we talk about every week on the podcast, and I'm sure you do too on the radio show, Adam, is that look, man, you can put Bryce Young in Carolina, but you have to do it with the understanding that he is going to struggle with no offensive line, no wide receivers, uh, a, a, a ownership and front office and turmoil based on the, the story yep. we read in the athletic yesterday. And, but if you surround him with, people that can help him, C.J. Stroud, Anthony Richardson, then perhaps you have a chance. That's the same conversation for Drake. That's the same conversation for Caleb or any other quarterback that ends up going in the first round. You know, it's funny because I, 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 I did want to get to the Young versus Stroud debate here because we are um, – So I, I'll just kind of preface it. I do want to go back to the other quarterbacks, but we're so results box score oriented that all we see – C.J. Stroud putting up monster numbers, blah, blah. Oh, my gosh, the Panthers lost the draft. When I don't believe it's fair. Look, C.J. Stroud might be the better quarterback. I'm not trying to say anything otherwise. And certainly by production right now, go, oh, my gosh. I understand why people say that. But I don't believe for a second that Bryce Young has had a single chance to be even mildly successful here. There's, They can't protect him. They haven't... 
last week was the first time they even flashed anything close to a running game. He has the only receiver he's got to throw to that he knows where he's going to be is Adam Thielen. And all of his best throws have gone to Adam Thielen, every single one of them. I, I just don't know how anybody can succeed given that. And yeah, ownership matters. I just don't think we can judge anything about Bryce Young until he has competence around him. You want a great example, Adam? Hey, let's go to Green Bay and look at Jordan Love, who sat on the bench for a couple years. Mm -hmm. He got off to a little rocky start this year. Oh, look at that. He's coming around. He had a chance to learn the offense. He wasn't forced into the role. He didn't have terrible players around him, unable to lift that offense around him. And I'm not trying to disrespect the Carolina Panthers, but when you look around the league, they are deficient in a lot of areas compared to other teams. And I think patience is something, as you pointed out, that fans don't have. Some owners don't have. And here's something else that <laughs> Rick and I talked David about. David Tepper doesn't have. Right. <laughs> I didn't want to name names. That's fine. But here's something else that Rick and I talked about, Adam. If C.J. Stroud were just having an average rookie quarterback season and he looked like uh, Anthony Richardson did before he got hurt or maybe some of the other quarterbacks have had to play, Frank Reich might still have his job. Because I think what happened is David Tepper looked over his shoulder and said, wait a second, uh, this is going – they're going off down in Houston. Why aren't we doing the same thing? And you could argue again, uh, the front office and the drafting – the coaching, D'Amico mm-hmm. Ryans, the offensive coordinator they brought in, and Bobby Slowick, and then C.J. Stroud, to not take anything away from him, is playing absolutely out of his mind, as you have noted. Those players around him have stepped up. The offensive line was banged up, but they were able to protect him. The playmakers on the outside have helped him, and, and you talk about it, and Rick and I go through every single snap of the rookie quarterbacks, Bryce, C.J., and, and Will Levis now, and we're having the same conversations that you're talking about. Like it, w- Bryce doesn't have a chance. Has Bryce no played chance. great? No. He has not, but there are glimpses that you see from Alabama that you would like to see more consistently, and that just hasn't happened yet. Yeah, again, I think he is in, in in a lot of ways, I think he is similar to Brock Purdy in that he anticipates oh, yeah. uh, throws, right? I, I think he's that type of a quarterback, and when you don't know where your wide receivers are going to be, he doesn't trust them. He, he just does it. I go back to the game against the, the Falcons in the opener. Like I think an argument could be made, and Bryce took the zero for it. I think an argument could be made that the two interceptions, uh, and I forget the guy, the same guy who uh, intercepted them both, uh, Jesse Bates. Jesse Bates. The both interceptions could have been the receiver wasn't where he was supposed to be, and I think at that point I can absolutely think uh, I can't trust that guy. I can't with I can't trust Jonathan Minko. I can't can't trust Terrace Marshall. Whoever the receivers were, I I can absolutely see that. All right. Um, all right. I don't. I don't want to feel like I'm crazy, but people again they look at box scores and oh, they clearly lost the draft. And by the way, the folks at the Four Letter Network don't help us any because that's all they do is they sit every day and bang on. Like the Panthers can get banged on for a lot of reasons, uh, but Bryce Young, I don't believe is one of them. But I want to get back to Caleb Williams real quick. Off-platform throws, uh, unstructured offense. Aren't we describing Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, quarterbacks like that, Joe Burrow to a, to a large extent, that make play Josh Allen, that make a lot of plays when everything breaks down? Don't you want that? Yeah, and I think that's we got to have something to talk about because the draft isn't until April 25th, Adam. <laughs> and I think part of the other issue is that there's been some pushback, fair or not, that Caleb's dad's going to be involved. And I've right. had a scout tell me, think LeVar Ball. Uh, oh, really? He, he paints sneak- his fingernails. Oh, he, he's, Sneaker he's, brand? He, he, <laughs> he's talked about, you know, maybe Caleb doesn't come out this year. This is back in the, in the fall okay. in September. Uh, maybe we want ownership stake in, in the team. Like Stuff that you're like, okay, listen, let, let's dial it back a few notches here. And that's going to play into it. And I've, I've had teams tell me that it's a concern. I've had other teams tell me that he can be quote unquote managed. And that's not necessarily a conversation you want to have about a player's relatives. But right. again, that's, <laughs> that's where we are. I think that plays into it because I mean, there's no one squeakier clean than Drake may. We know his family right. and all the success they've had athletically and, and the type of people they are. And, and that, that means something, you know, by the way, Drake is six, four, two thirty, whatever he is. And he looks like he was built in a quarterback factory. <laughs> so all those things are going to be taken into consideration, but in terms of strictly what you see on the field, there is no doubt in my mind that Caleb Williams is a special, special talent. And can he play in structure? Yeah, he can. Does he do it a lot? Not as often as maybe an NFL team would like. But to your point, the things he does out of structure, one other person on planet Earth can do it, maybe two. 
Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen. And if you want to be convinced that he can play inside a structured offense, watch his very last game of college against UCLA, and they have a bunch of dudes in that defense, a couple of them are going to get drafted in the first round, and he was in structure and on time consistently because otherwise he would have gotten hit in the mouth. And I think that's where you start the conversation, and then you look at all the other work he did on the field. The off-field stuff will take care of itself in terms of the interviews and, and how teams deal with that. But in terms of the, the way he plays football, I don't know how you can't love what he brings to a team. Yeah, I also, if I'm an NFL franchise, if I, I mean, he's a he's going to be a professional. That I mean, what dad says or what how dad acts, I, I it's just not even a concern. Un, unless I have two players who are identical, in which right. case I'll go. Well, let, let me let me eliminate the headache. But there's obviously not two players who are identical. I've heard this. Final thing for you, Ryan Wilson. We haven't talked any NFL football <laughs> for this week, and that's fine uh, because we're we're going to have an absolute derp fest at quarterback tonight. Uh, look, I hope Mitch Trubisky plays well because I assume it's going to be Trubisky and Mac Jones. I hope Mitch plays well. I hope the Steelers win. I'd love to see the Steelers make the playoffs again. I'm a huge Mike Tomlin fan. Um, the the thing about uh, Williams for me. People have said that L- Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud were better prospects, are are still better prospects than Williams or May or even Jaden Daniels. How would you react to that? No, if Caleb had come out in last year's draft, if he were eligible, he'd have been the, the first quarterback taken. I mean, the issue with Bryce, of course, is his size. C.J., we didn't know how athletic he was until that Georgia game. People in the building knew, but you can say that to, to scouts and media mm-hmm. folk, and you're not going to believe until you see it. And I think we undersold how good C.J. actually was. He was the most accurate passer in last year's draft. Right. Class. Bryce was close behind. But Caleb does so many things that very few people on earth can do. And by the way, I talked about his dad. Caleb is a competitor. And one of the pushbacks we got was, well, he was making faces at the Notre Dame game. He wasn't into it. He cried when they lost the game late in the season. What's wrong uh, with that? That's because he wants to win. I don't hate that. That's what I want in a quarterback. Yeah. What's wrong? He cried, cried when he lost. What? <laughs> What's wrong with that? He didn't cry when they took uh, his lunch away. Or they, right. they wanted to win a game. I have. Why People get upset or they... I uh, draw meaning from the silliest things. Uh, Ryan Wilson, you are awesome. I appreciate your time always, sir. Thank you, Adam. Have a good one, brother. You got it.